We're celebrating a Cup of Joe milestone with our 100th episode. To everyone who's watched since day one, thank you. And to everyone who is just joining, welcome. We're excited to continue growing Cup of Joe and bringing you education and current events in the agricultural industry for another 100 episodes and beyond. We discuss our yields and hitch pin program, high yielding stein corn and Mershman soybeans, how great the commodity prices are this year and ordering seed before December. Weather is going to be great while harvesting crops for the next two weeks. Stick around for Joe's corny joke. Hi, this is Joe Mershman. Welcome to Cup of Joe's, season number three, episode number nine. Today we have Tommy and Turk and Ben and lots to talk about. And I know you're busy, so we'll try to keep it as short as possible. Let's jump right in with Ben. Talk about yields, right? Yep. Yields have been the big talk and we kind of hit on some preliminary stuff the past couple of weeks, but we're seeing a lot of corn come out. Um, fuller season uh, varieties at 114, 115 day are coming out at, you know, that 21, 22 percent moisture. So we're actually starting to see some good corn yields coming in. Uh, we have two plots out of Lee County here, which is where West Point is located, and both of them did very, very good on on Stein corn. We don't have any bean plots out yet, but the highs on both plots, we had one out of Weaver, Iowa, that was 287 on 9808, and 9808 also took the Huffton, Iowa plot at 257. So, and both of those were planted at 38,000 and at 40,000. So Ben was that 980E was that traded or is that conventional or Both of those were straight Gs. So they're glyphosate tolerant. Uh, we had a pretty big push because we believe that the glyphosate carries a yield gene associated with it or at least there's no yield drag. So we wanted to push as much straight glyphosate product out there to put it out in the the market to see that, you know, maybe we don't need as much protection as what some of the BS companies have been pushing the big seed companies have been pushing throughout the years sure. and, and, and we're definitely seeing yield. We see a little bit of earworm damage in some of our bigger like like actual field scenarios, but it's nothing that is gonna be so yield detrimental that it doesn't it's still not it's still paying for the itself risk for the price. Rewards greater. Correct. Yeah. Well Ben, I I, I wanna hear about your dad's yield, you know. I mean uh, I mean I, I I just remember when this whole process started with Harry Stein when he started breeding corn I said, Harry, you're trying to breed 300 bushel corn. And, and he goes, no, Joe, 400 bushel corn is what I'm doing with a shorter style hybrid, uh, you know, pack the density in and, you know, use higher levels of management on fertility and sulfur, fungicide, and basically unlock that yield potential. So tell us about your dad's yield. We have a field in Weaver, Iowa that has extremely high organic matter. It's a little bit of a wet hole, so that's its, its Achilles heel. Um, we had some drown out spots in it, so the field didn't average as high as what our, our high point was in that field, but we basically ran from one end of the field to the other and the yield monitor didn't drop below 320. Uh, there was blips of 400 in that pass. There was a lot of 350 to 370, 370 bushel corn, so it's, it's a really fun, fun thing when you're getting to operate and run in that environment. What was that population been? 40,000. 40,000. And 30 inch rows. So the key is, is we're showing the potential of, of these yields this year. In other words, with the environment that we had, we're seeing the potential. So that, that's pretty exciting. I mean, uh, I know I passed that on to Harry and he, I know he's so busy looking at data, he didn't respond yet or either that or he fainted and fell off his chair, I'm not sure, <laughs> but I'm sure he just said, that's what we expect, you know. Right, and so. that's what, and that's really goes back to, you know, it's it's probably 7 8% organic matter. Um, it's one of those areas in the field that's not going to run out of moisture. The ears were dry, they were at that 21, 22% moisture, but the, the, the plant was still green. So it had stay green throughout the field, it didn't short itself for water throughout the year even though we only got two tenths of an inch in august so that's what the potential is if we can get ideal rains if we can manage water holding capacity all those things that's what we can do with this high management corn plenty of nitrogen plenty of sulfur was also part of that that plan well so, and, and we have another plot uh, working with uh, sinclair tractor uh, and uh, a local farmer here uh, and he's in 15 inch rows and and basically uh, non-irrigated, when that was irrigated, was that Ours irrigated? Ours was non-irrigated. Non-irrigated, okay. But anyhow, so we'll see what, when you we even close those rows a little bit tighter and we push push that population and, and uh, do some fertility things, what, what we can do. So hopefully we see uh, see some more. 
high yields. Correct. Ben, you guys had a 100 bushel Truman yield a few years ago. Was that the same field by chance? No, nope, different field. Yeah. This field is just, it's, it's one of our tougher fields that we work with because it's so wet all the time. Gotcha. So we, it's one of those fields that when it's dry and it's time to plant, I mean, that's the first field. When we can find that field to get dry, that's, that's when we, we dive into that. So sometimes that field doesn't get planted till late May. But this year we had a decent spring. It got put in right, and, mm -hmm. and we're really and, excited. And in and, and a drier end of the season, which uh, favored, uh, particularly with that organic matter, it really came into, came into play. Correct. Um, you know that's that's pretty exciting, and I, I've got a few more yields that I'd would like to mention since we're on the yield segment. But I would also like to, you know, let farmers know that we've got some farmers that don't have such great yields this year too because of the drought. But we'd still like to hear from you because I know some of you had virtually no rain in July, no rain in August, and you're still raising some 40 and 45 bushel soybeans, which we'd like to know about that too. And uh, we are offering if you send the yield monitor in. Uh, the hitch fin and uh, and you know it's worth about 25 bucks and uh, the way these guys are hauling these things off the field they may wear one out this year uh, with uh, yields but you know Ben your dad had a great yield but there's a bunch of farmers with stein corn also in this area that also had great yields uh, one of the uh, farmers north of town called in a yield was uh, 15 acres now this is 15 acres not it averaged 302 wet and 294 dry, and that's off 15 acres. Um, again, you talked about your dad's yield. I know he sent his yield. Talk about the varieties too. Yeah. That's 97.14. 97.14. You, and then, uh, your, of course, your dad had a, a 97.14 G that was uh, yielding 269, and he sent that yield monitor in uh, yield in. Uh, we also had uh, one west of town. What was that yield? Um, it was a 97.46 dash 20 that was running in. Uh, lower 300s we've never seen corn yields like that locally here so we're pretty excited so right. um, and then switching to beans a little bit um, Auburn Nebraska we had a yield uh, call in uh, and yield monitor Harrison 2030e uh, 72 in spots 68.5 average for the whole field um, we had another yield uh, over by Pella Iowa Apache 1926e uh, 78.3 uh, then we had another yield um, this one's over by Donaldson, Iowa, uh, and Harrison 2030E, 71.9, because we're not into the fuller season varieties right now. We're taking the fuller, the shorter ones. Here's one over, another one by Huffton, west of West Point, uh, Jefferson 1933, Liberty Link GT27, 77.7. Uh, that was an excellent yield. Uh, we, we, you know, obviously we've been getting some great yields from down in southern Illinois and uh, Virgins, Illinois. We had a Kennedy uh, 1936 E, 80 acres, average 75 bushels an acre. Wow. And uh, then we jump into uh, one over by Champaign, Illinois, uh, Apache 1926 E, uh, yield monitor 92. I mean, uh, uh, come in. Uh, so just just a lot of really nice yields out there. And again, we would like to hear from the farmers in that, those drought areas too, so we can uh, brag about how many bushels you can raise with no water. I mean, it's just incredible this year. So that's kind of what I had uh, to talk about. And Turk, I know you've been watching this market and uh, you've got some opinions on that too, right? And of course, this advice is free, right? This, this is free advice. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the markets, uh, the traders caught off guard this week from the, the grain stocks report and uh, you know the from from a year ago this is compared to a year ago corn old crop corn is down 10 percent from a year ago levels old crop soybeans are down 42 percent from a year ago levels and uh, wheat's down eight percent but so caught the trade off guard that there that our numbers are off that much I mean and, and that's your stock carryover and stock that's, yeah carryover stocks uh, on hand stocks on hand uh, it was 50 million bushels below trade expectations on on the soybeans and 25 billion below on corn so that's why we're seeing a big spike in the numbers now do not overlook these prices because on soybeans the prices that we're seeing right now are are all-time highs for every contract period across the board for the 2020 crop that we have that we're harvesting right now so we've never seen these prices before you've never had this opportunity to get these prices don't overlook that fact I think you got to have these beans um, priced by middle of December at the latest because 
once we get beyond that and the rivers close up, South America is gonna, gonna be trying to figure out how they're gonna take advantage of uh, the, the crop that they've got coming. It'll be available to the marketplace. Plus, they're gonna, they're gonna do everything they can to get their, their, be able to get it to the exports because the world wants soybeans right now and we're the only ones that has them. That's why our demand is as strong as it is and the prices we have are as strong as they are. So don't overlook this and maybe even think about trying to market some of next year's crop. Same way with corn. This is the highest prices we've had since last March for corn across the board in our commodities right now. So yeah, don't point. overlook these prices. Good place to start or get get, get aggressive depending upon what your cost structure is. Yep. One. So yeah, that's... The basis has been so strong on soybeans, and I've always heard that that's that's the true picture of demand. And when the basis is positive, uh, in, in, which it had been, uh, that is time to, to, to move some crops. So uh, that's great news, Turk. Uh, yeah. you know, and when you keep a strong basis right into harvest, that's another sign that we need. they want the soybeans now. They want them now, and they're willing to pay for them. That's great news. That's great news. Tommy, what, what's the prospects? I know you've been studying the weather this uh, this week, give us a give us an update. In other words, you know, it's just been perfect conditions so far. Is it going to continue? Yeah. Um, well, uh, John Fult, John Felt's uh, weather forecast here uh, given to us. It looks like uh, the six to ten day um, temperatures are going to be a little bit average. Um, but when we get to the eight to fourteen day look outlook, it looks like they're going to be above average. So it's going to be a little warmer, and in our precipitation uh, falls of that, it's going to be very dry um, as far as below normal pre precipitation for this time of year. So. Uh, I think it's going to be a pretty quick harvest, Joe, as far as the weather conditions being about perfect for that, especially when we get the heat in here in the next couple of weeks, uh, things will really start to dry down, and this wind's helping too as well. So, um, and it looks like, I would say, uh, if, as across the Midwest, we're, we're probably at around 15 to 20% on the harvest update. Uh, this week, we didn't necessarily get as many things uh, picked as, as, as we did last week, uh, but it's really going to take off here. Uh, in the first part of next week so look at things to be uh, like I said a little bit warmer and a lot of bit drier so. yeah even with the cool temperatures we had yesterday there's 35 percent humidity is what you were telling me right. you know, 15 20 mile an hour winds you can cut beans when it's 50 degrees and right a lot of guys really happy and a lot of guys are saying that these beans are drier than you think they are there there's some there can might even be some green leaves out there but they're still testing 13, 14 percent. And we're saying that with corn too. And, and right. Some of the Stein hybrids are showing a lot of green, but yet the, the ears are pretty dry. So, right. so uh, be aggressive. Be aggressive. S stock integrity is pretty good, wouldn't you say, for yep. the most part? Yep. Pretty much all the way across the board. I mean, when we were harvesting, when I was sitting in the combine anyway, it, was, it smells like silage. That's how wet the stalks yeah. are, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. when, when you know you could leave that out there and yep. stand if you have to, let it dry down. Well, busy week. Lots of good news. Um, um, again, if you send in your picture of your yield monitor uh, with the variety and your name and address, we'll send you a, a one-inch hitch pin. It's about a $25 value on a good day. So uh, we hope, hope you take advantage of that. And again, you guys that uh, in those dry areas, we want to hear your, your numbers too because uh, we learn a lot from that too. So again, uh, we'll end up the session with uh, our corny joke, and this one here was actually sent in by Amy Niver uh, from Rosen's, uh, our, one of our seed treatment, our seed treatment supplier, not one of our seed treatment supplier. She said, why shouldn't you tell a secret on a farm? Why shouldn't you tell a secret on a farm? Because the potatoes have eyes and the corns, corn has ears. <laughs> because the potatoes have eyes and the corn has ears. So anyhow, Good reason not to tell the secret. Yep. So, but the word is getting out about Mershman seeds and our seed treatments and what's going on here. So pretty exciting week. And uh, again, we'll let you get back to harvest. And again, thanks for your support. Hope you and your family are, are well, and we'll see you next week. Yeah.